Amen. I want to speak to you today out of the book of Mark, chapter 6. I'll be reading verses 35 through 44. I want to thank these singers for ushering in the presence of God. Beautiful singing unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 35 through 44. And this is what the word of God says. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away, that we may go into the country round about and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? His disciples were being facetious there. What they were saying was, Okay, Lord, um, should we go buy about $15,000 worth of bread to feed this multitude? That's what they were saying. That's what 200 penny worth is about. And he saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And we, when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and brake the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat, everyone say all eat, and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. And just for a short while this morning, I want to preach along this title, A Hope for the Hungry. Can we pray and, and ask God to bless this service? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your presence that we already feel here today, Jesus. God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would begin to work upon every heart and every mind and every soul here today, Jesus. God, let there be a receiving of your word in our lives today, God. I pray, Lord, that you anoint my humble lips, God, and, and my heart and my mind. Lord, let me follow after your spirit, God. Let me follow after your anointing, Lord, that somebody might hear your voice today. We give you all the honor and glory and praise. And the church said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated like to also welcome you, those that are visiting us online today. If you're tuning in to Souls Harbor this morning, you're in the right place. Amen. Just a short time before this great miracle of feeding the 5,000, we read in the earlier portion of Mark chapter 6 how Jesus is sending out the 12 disciples two by two. And it's important to note here that the disciples hadn't been with Jesus a very long time. And most likely this was one of the first times, if not the first time, that Jesus said, All right, fellas, go out on your own without me and go and preach and go and teach and go and heal the lame. This was most likely their first time without him. And as he sent them out, he gave them very important instructions. And one of them was take nothing for your journey except a staff. No bread, no money, no bag of money, no extra clothes. Jesus said, I'm going to send you out without these things. Kind of interesting, amen, for the master to send them out with nothing. Take nothing for your journey except your sandals your coat, and go out and preach and teach this gospel. And so they went out and preached that people should repent. They went out two by two and drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Miracles, signs, and wonders are taking place by these 12 disciples. They are seeing the power that 
worked within them. And Jesus isn't around. They're healing the sick. And I can imagine these young disciples that Jesus isn't around. And they're praying for people and they're miraculously healed. You see, Jesus was sending them out that they might grow. Jesus was sending them out that they might see the power that they had within them. Amen. And so the Bible does not tell us how long they were away from Jesus. But we get to the place right before the miracle feeding of the 5,000. And the disciples have now returned to Jesus after being away from him for some time. And people, the Bible says, begin to recognize them. They see the disciples and they see Jesus all together. And they know about this miracle man from Nazareth. Amen. But the disciples have their moment with Jesus. And they're so excited to tell him about the healings, about the recoveries, about the, mir the miraculous things that they were able to do with the power. But instead, this crowd begins to gather. And Jesus' attention begins to be on the multitude. Amen. Word of God tells us that People recognized Jesus and his disciples. And so in an effort to avoid this multitude, they said, let's get in this boat and let's get on to the other side of the water. Amen. They begin to tell Jesus the stories. They begin to tell Jesus everything that they had done and taught. And they finally arrived to the other side and probably thinking they got some quiet time with the master got some time alone with the master. But no, you see, that's not the case because the word of God tells us that when the people saw Jesus and his disciples get into the boat and go across, that they ran across and they beat them there. Imagine that as your disciples and, and you're just waiting for your turn and, and Mark has spoken and John and Luke and everyone and you're just waiting for your moment and then that, that boat hits land, and all of a sudden, there's a multitude. They ran by foot and beat them there. And the Word of God says that Jesus was moved with compassion. I'm going to tell you about a soul that is hungry. It doesn't matter if you have to run by foot to get ahead to where the master's going to be. The hungry soul doesn't mind running by foot. It doesn't matter if you're hungry for God and it seems like you've just been put aside. You run to the master and he gets in a boat to avoid you. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're hungry, it doesn't matter that that took place because you've got to get to Jesus. You know about the miracles and you want the master to touch your life. It doesn't matter if you had to run by foot. It doesn't matter if him and his disciples seem to want to avoid you. You're hungry. You're hungry. Amen. Praise God. Word of God tells us that Jesus was moved with compassion, and he said, I'm going to teach some more. And so he began to teach. And now it's getting very late, and the disciples are annoyed. They're tired. They didn't get to tell all their stories and all the miracles they did, and now they're, they're pressing Jesus. They're really trying to say, Lord, will you, will you stop preaching? Send them away. And Jesus is just teaching. He's still preaching. It's kind of like that, you know, when that preacher's about to end and he says, I'm almost done. And he just keeps going and going and going. And though the saints love him, they're like, man, will you please hurry up and be quiet because you're getting in the way of my food. That's what his disciples, you thought it started here. No, it started way back 2,000 years ago. And the disciples said, Lord, you're preaching too long. We had to make three tapes for Jesus' is preaching that day. Amen. But they said, Master, send them away that they may go and buy some food. It's late, Jesus. You've been preaching too long, Jesus. And he turns to them and he says this, give ye them to eat. They're so hungry, and you're so worried about them. Give them something to eat. See, he had sent them out two by two. 
saying, take nothing for your journey except the staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. But now he's expecting them to feed the multitude. Amen. He said, take nothing for your journey. But now he's expecting them to have something to feed this multitude. Give them something to eat. Give them what you have. Everybody say what we have. Say what we have. Amen. The disciples are standing around and trying to figure this out. They're saying, wow, there's 12 of us. No bread. 12 plus no bread equals no bread. Mark's looking at John and saying, you got any fish? We don't got any fish. Well, 12 disciples times no fish means no fish. Amen. But when you got Jesus, I said, when you have Jesus, oh, when you have Jesus, what I want to bring today is a hope that this world needs, and that's in Jesus. Amen. The hope for the weary today is Jesus. The hope for the lost here today is Jesus. The hope for the violence in our world today is still Jesus. The hope for every race and every color and every society is still Jesus. By myself, I don't have any bread to feed. By myself, I don't have any fish. But with the master by my side, with the great creator of all things, anything is possible. So when Jesus says, give ye them to eat, I know as long as he's by my side, there's a miracle waiting to happen. Can we worship God for that? See, by ourselves, we'll leave people hungry. By ourselves, we'll leave the multitudes weary, amen. But I serve a God. I said I serve a God when everything seems impossible. When that sickness seems uncurable, amen. When that financial strain that we've been facing seems impossible. I serve a God that has a breakthrough for us today. I serve a God that is, has everything in the palm of his hand, amen. So he tells his disciples, how much food do you have? And so they go searching. The Bible says that they find a boy who had brought himself five loaves of bread and two fish. I like that this young lad is in that service with Jesus preaching. The word of God doesn't mention mama there, and the word of God doesn't mention daddy there, but there's this boy that chose to be with the master. There's a boy that said, Mama, can you make me a lunch? And she says, where are you going? You're going to Isaiah's house? No. You're going to Freddie's house? No, no. There's that man, Jesus, from Nazareth, and he's preaching. And Mom, just pack my lunch. I want to go there. And I want to hear what this man has to say. The Word of God tells us that the disciples go searching in that multitude. And they find that little boy. And there he is sitting there with his lunch. They look and they say, boy, here's the deal. That man we've been hearing preach, he can do all miracles. And he's asking us to find some food. I don't know what he's going to do. But I got a feeling something miraculous is about to happen. Now, boy, here's the deal. We're not going to steal your lunch. We're not going to take your bread. And we're not going to take your fish. But I guarantee you, if you'll give up of what you have, something great is about to happen. Young boy, you can keep what you have for yourself. You can keep that fish and you can keep that bread. But I'm going to tell you something. If you give what you have, they're going to be telling about your story and your fish 2,000 years later at Seoul Harbor Church in Phoenix or Glendale, Arizona. They're going to be talking about what you had and what you gave up. If you want to do something great, why don't you give of what you have, amen? Let the master take what you have. Let the master take those little fish and watch what God can do. You see, 
The world needs the church to give of herself. It's great that we have the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. It's great that we have an understanding and revelation of water baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. But if we keep that just for ourselves, instead of going out and telling the lost, you need Jesus. Telling the lost, you need the Holy Ghost. Telling the lost, you need to be baptized in the lovely name of Jesus. And that whole lifestyle that you had, every sin in your life will be washed away into a sea of forgetfulness. The world needs Jesus. The world needs the church to give of herself. This city needs Souls Harbor to give of herself that one might be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. The finances that God gave you. Oh, don't get quiet on me, church. I said the finances that God gave you, it's not just for you. But it's that you would give of yourself and give of what God has blessed you to someone in need. Amen. That peace that you have today in this crazy world we're living in right now with COVID and and, and, and masks everywhere, and gloves everywhere, and just so much chaos. The peace that we have, we need to tell the world, this is why I have peace in the midst of this storm. This is why I'm not losing my mind and going crazy while I should be. Because this world is sick. This world is filled with sin. And there's a reason that the church is not going crazy. Because we have the Spirit of God in us. Because we know the one that holds everything in his hand. But oh, how much better would it be if I shared what I had within me. If I gave that peace that's keeping my life in control to someone else that's not so peaceful. Amen. That's what God wants. That's what God wants for the church to give of herself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember a time where I had a close friend, and I still have this friend, but he was in the military. He was in Germany. His dad had just suffered a severe stroke, and it was probably daytime in Germany, but it was, it was middle of the night in, in Tucson. And that phone rang and started telling me about his dad, and it didn't look very good. It was suffering and lost a lot of body functions. But he said this one thing to me. He said, hey, your church is that kind of church that believes in prayer. And then when you pray for someone that God can heal them, right? I said, yes, we do. He said, can you pray for my dad tonight that he don't die? Can you pray for my dad that he'll be all right? Let me tell you something, church. That's what this world is looking for. That's what this world is looking for. Do you know Jesus? Do you have the answer for my problems? Do you know a way out for me? Yes, we do. And his name is Jesus. Yes, I know a healer. And his name is Jesus. Yes, I know a provider. And his name is Jesus. Yes, I know the way maker. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what our world is looking for today, church. So the disciples bring that fish and bread to Jesus. And they say, Lord, we, we found some bread and we found some fish the Lord blessed it and the Lord break, broke it and at the end of it all 5,000 men that's what the word of God calls out just the men it was most likely women and children like this little lad that gave us but everyone ate and at the end of it all the word of God tells us that they gathered all the fragments the leftovers of baskets and all of a sudden, there's 12 more baskets left over of bread and fish. You see, that's what God does. That's what God does. What I like about this story is Jesus could have just miraculously slapped his finger or just thought it into existence or just said, you want food? Boom, there's food. But no, he said, we'll find someone that has something that wants to give it up, that I can do a miracle with it. Go find which food we have there, that I can have that person willingly 
give it up. Willingly give of what they have. That I could turn around and, and bless the multitude. See, church, that's what God wants of us. When we give of ourselves, when we share of ourselves what God has given us, then we're telling God, you can trust me. You can trust me with the gifts of the Spirit, Lord. You can trust me with those finances, Lord. You can trust me, God, with whatever you want to trust me with because I'm going to give back out what you've given to me. I'm going to be a blessing, Lord, like you blessed me. I'm going to help my city and my community and tell someone of what the miracles you've done in my life. Can we worship God today? Can we lift up that lovely name of Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. a message for the hungry here today. You see, sometimes we look nice and cool and collective and all together, right? Look all sharp, got the shiny shoes and the nice clothes and everything looks good on the outside. Everything looks fine and, and a okay on the, on the outside, but on the inside, there's a storm going. On the inside, it's, it's pain. It's painful memories. It's things that have scarred your life that nobody knows about. It's, it's things that you've lived with and that you've bore for many years. And on the outside, everything's okay. I'll prove it to you. I could go to anyone and say, hey, hey, brother, how's it going? What's your response? Good, doing good. Hey, sister, good to see you. God bless you. How are you doing? I'm doing great knows no telling what you went through last week you may have just celebrated another death anniversary of your child you may just that day may have just rolled up of something this horrible that happened in your life but somehow everyone's okay somehow everyone's doing fine and it's not we're hurting this world is lost and broken what they need is souls harbor to say hey you know the way we got the peace. We know Jesus. You need Jesus. You got questions. We know the answer. Amen. Many, many years ago, I was a car salesman there in Tucson. And I sold a vehicle to a lady who worked at a mental hospital. And she had almost everything she needed, but we, we, we rolled the car. We let her take it home. And and I said, hey, tomorrow I'll make it convenient for you. I'll go to your job. And you just make your copies of everything we need, get these papers signed, and I'm going to pick up that paper. We'll be good. So I went to that mental hospital the next day, and um, the lady said, hey, you, you need to wait right here. I said, yeah, I, I understand. I, I know where I'm at. And she said, we're, we're going to call her. So I'm waiting there. Five minutes go by. Ten minutes go by. 20 minutes goodbye. Finally, the lady says, you know, I'm going to let you in. And she gives me the direction of where to go. Turn here, turn there. She'll be right there. So I go in there, and I make my way down the halls, and the left turns, and the right turns. And I get to the place where they told me she would be. And as I'm standing there, this lady is approaching me, walks right by me. Looked like a million bucks. Smelled good. Dressed very nice, pretty woman, walked by, and she goes behind the corner where I could see, and she came across, I could see her silhouette, and she walked into this room, and I was just there standing, looking in that room. All of a sudden, someone else entered that room, and a light goes on. And she began to question her, how are you doing today? She says, not good. How was your week? Well, I tried to commit suicide twice within the past week. And I realized I'm standing there hearing this help going on. And what I took away from that church's approaching me was a beautiful lady that looked so well. And as she passed, I could smell the perfume and everything looked so good. Everything looked so right. 
to see underneath it all and behind that curtain. I'm broken. I don't want to live anymore. I'm hurting. I tried to kill myself twice this past week and all around in your city today, church. There's people, you're passing by. There's people in that restaurant. There's that waitress that seems so nice and sweet and underneath it all, her world is crumbling and it's, and it's broken and there's hurts. And what the world needs is some food. What the world needs is someone to give of herself what God has blessed you with. The peace, the love, the joy. God is saying, give it to them. There's a world that's hurting. There's a world that needs me, and you're my way. I'm not going to force anyone to serve me. That's what Jesus is saying. But through you and with your testimony and with your voice and with your Bible study, and with I, I, I can help. I can reach this world that needs me so much. Amen. Praise God. So back to our disciples. What is so fascinating here is that Jesus expected something out of these disciples, knowing he sent them out with nothing. And see, being the young disciples, and young in Christ that they were, their response was, we don't have anything. But let me share with you what a walk with God does. Let me share with you today, church, what time with a master does for you. Let me share with you today, church, of how being in God's presence and serving God and reading the word of God and spending time in prayer helps us. Just a little later down the road in the book of Acts, in chapter 3, the Word of God tells us that Peter and John are walking to the temple. And they pass the gate called Beautiful. And there's a lame man there. And he's begging of all. He's in need. He's hurting. The Word of God says that since birth, this is all this man knew. They would go and lay him every day at the gate and say, get whatever you need today. Maybe someone will be compassionate on you today. And there they are, and this man is begging alms. And look what happens there later down the road. Peter says, look on us. And this man looks. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Can you say that? Such as I have. See, just before they didn't have anything. Just a short while before that when Jesus said, give them what you have, they said, Lord, we don't have anything. But just a little bit more time with Jesus, just a little longer walk with the master, all of a sudden Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I got something now. I got a little bit of faith now. I got a little bit of, of faith in my God. I got a little bit more strength. I've gotten a little stronger in the Lord. I've got a little bit more miracles under my belt. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Before I couldn't feed somebody, before I didn't have any fish and I didn't have any loaf, but now such as I have, walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As our musicians come, such as I have, give I thee. That man had no idea what he was about to get. Man, he heard silver. His eyes must have lit up. He heard gold. Whoa. He said, such as I have. Peter said, you're hurting. You, you spend every day of your life on the ground. It's time to get up. And I'm going to give you what I got. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, can we all stand? You see, we can leave this building. We can all walk out and go our own way. I'll hit I-10 and head back to Tucson. You'll get ready for your work this week. Maybe grab a bite today, and then everything starts again next week, and it's going to be the same thing over and over again. We can make a decision today. Lord, I've probably kept more than I should have. 
I know some hurting people. I know some hurting co-workers. I know that that man across the street that, that needs Jesus. It's about time I give of myself. And that's what God is asking us today. Give them what you have. See, there's a power that God has given each and every one of us that is filled with his Holy Spirit. He's been baptized in Jesus. There's a power that we possess. There's a spirit that we possess that when somebody is broken and someone needs a touch, the spirit guides us. They say, how you doing, brother? Hey, I just feel a prayer for the Lord in the name of Jesus. Whatever this man may be going through, Lord, I pray for him. Let your spirit cover him. That's what God wants us to do. Hey, how you doing, Cohen? You know, I just, I know this is strange, but can I pray for you, brother? Can I pray for you? And God is saying, give. And that's what God wants to tell us today. I've blessed you. Give. Give them what you have.